Electricity Northwest own and operate the electricity distribution network in the northwest of England, which runs from Greater Manchester in the south through Lancashire to Cumbria and the Scottish border. Uh, and our job is to invest in it, maintain it and develop it. That's an exciting job at the moment because with the low carbon transition, the nature of the network and what it has to do is changing quite dramatically. Decarbonisation is very important to Electricity North West because one of the main ingredients of the change is the, the shift from uh, fossil fuels and other high carbon energy sources to electricity, which is a low carbon energy source. And as a consequence of that, we all need to put more infrastructure in to accommodate it. So the, the change to low carbon uh, is inextricably linked to the development of our network, not only the basic infrastructure, but how it's managed and controlled, how do we cope with solar panels and onshore wind, and how do we do it at, at lowest cost. At, uh, the first quarter last year, just before the, the Greater Manchester Carbon Summit, we launched the Leading the North West to Zero Carbon Plan. This was the first time we'd developed a, such a plan, um, and it really has three elements. They are simple to say, difficult to do. Uh, the first element was to put our own house in order, so Electricity Northwest published in that plan how we will transition to low carbon and eventually zero carbon. The second area was that we committed to helping others in their low carbon transition, not only stakeholders like uh, Greater Manchester Combined Authority, Lancashire and Cumbrian Councils, but also businesses and customers. And last but not least, we committed to stay ahead of the transition to make sure that there was enough capacity in our network so that if somebody wanted to fit a low carbon technology to their business or property or house, that the network capacity would be there so that we would not slow down the transition to low carbon. So those three elements uh, were the building blocks of the document. Um, within it were some specific examples. We committed to spending £64 million over a three-year period uh, out to uh, 2023, investing in efficient transformers in our own network, putting in new infrastructure to support growth, uh, quite a lot of that in the combined authority area, but also elsewhere in the northwest, investing in our own plant and equipment, and, and also start to really work with businesses and, and publicise ways that people can start their own low carbon transition to encourage people to do it and give them the confidence that the capacity will be there. We've also done quite a lot in-house. We said that we'd convert two of our depots to be low carbon exemplars and deploy low carbon technology. And we've done that at our depot in Whitegate in Oldham. And we're also doing it at our academy at Blackburn. The projects in Greater Manchester are there to really facilitate growth. Um, as everyone is well aware, the centre of Manchester is, is a dynamic and growing place. Um, and what we're finding is that the demand for electricity is, is changing and growing. Um, so several of the projects are in the city centre. And what they do is they provide more network capacity through new substations, new primary substations. But also we put in more cabling which gives us more options to route electricity around the city centre so we can increase capacity at low cost. We're also investing in additional capacity to support enterprise zones and growth areas such as the airport. Manchester was quite bold in coming with one of the early targets of 2038 and that, that was a, it really sort of laid down a challenge not only, not only for other parts of the UK but also for the government uh, and also for us. Um, but we were happy to respond to that, to that challenge. It's a, it's a target-driven challenge. We don't quite know how we'll get there yet. But it's interesting, even over the last 18 months, part of the, the jigsaw to get from where we are to where we need to be at zero carbon in 2038 is now a lot clearer. So it's amazing if you have a, an ambitious target, uh, how quickly you can respond to it as you try to, you try, you try to fill, fill the gaps. And I think uh, one of the things that Manchester's taught us is that um, if you're bold, and you really try to uh, meet people's aspirations, it's amazing how quickly you can make progress if you collaborate and work together. I think our, our leading the North West to, to zero provides a pretty good framework, but there's a lot more that needs to be done. 
probably the best way to describe this is to um, put it as four questions. Um, what one thing's for sure, if we, if, if we collaborate widely in this region uh, and try to address these four questions, then we can achieve 2038. The first area is in electric vehicles. So how quickly can we transition to electric vehicles? Uh, this is very important for us because electric vehicles could double the capacity requirement for our network. So having some idea when electric vehicles will take off is going to be very influential in our plan. Um, the government have currently got a target, uh, they're trying to put in place a target to have uh, no petrol and diesel vehicles sold after 2035. Um, we can certainly meet that target. Um, it will make a, mean some big changes to our network, but we can certainly meet that target. Um, I have to say, if we're in a climate emergency, 2035 doesn't sound like a response to an emergency. It sounds more like business as usual. Um, and we will do all we can to meet whatever target the government sets. The second area is in decarbonisation of heat. Um, the government is not too clear whether they are keen to pursue a hydrogen policy. Um, hydrogen is very important because it could be one of the main uh, solutions to decarbonising heat, uh, whether that's blue hydrogen, green hydrogen or a combination of both. Um, it's important to us because if the government commits to hydrogen, um, what will it also do about nuclear power? So there's a big interaction here between more electricity, which could be used to decarbonise heat, or the use of hydrogen, or in fact both. We are not really too worried about the outcome of the government's position. What we want is some clarity to help us invest. The third area is to do with distributed generation. So this is um, solar or onshore wind that connects to our network. If Manchester is going to hit 2038 to be carbon neutral, it needs a lot more distributed generation. Uh, and I'd like to know how that's going to be encouraged. Um, and when we've got some feel for how that is going to be encouraged and what the take up is going to be, we'll then need to make sure that we can accommodate it on the network. There are barriers at the moment that need to be removed, which have unintended consequences. One of the barriers today stopping businesses and uh, particularly investing in distributed generation is that when you invest in uh, solar panels, um, your business rates go up, which then is a clear disincentive to invest in the first place. So these unintended consequences of various policies need to be addressed uh, and, a, and a encouraging economically attractive environment he's putting in place. And I think that the fourth question that I've got is that is it's all to do, to do with energy efficiency. The best way to reduce carbon is to reduce the amount of energy that we use. And, and that means improving the efficiency of buildings and operations. And I'd like to know really what the government plans to do and what local and regional leaders plan to do about encouraging energy efficiency. This is vitally important for us as well because the more efficiently we use energy, the less electricity will need to be used. If we use less electricity, we'll have to invest less. If we have to invest less, then the costs will be lower and bills to customers will be lower. And therefore, it's vitally important for us that we understand what the, the routes to reducing efficiency are, because that will really help us put a lid on costs to customers. And we know from talking to our customers that is very, very important.